Uh, welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Otar Sharikadze. I'm Managing Director of Galton Taggart. And before starting this web conference, I would like to thank you all for being here today. Uh, let me tell you briefly about the agenda for today. Basically, we'll start with the opening remarks from Mr. Archil Gashibaze, CEO of Bank of Georgia. It will be followed by a presentation of our latest report, Georgian Economy Needs for a New Economic Model in the Context of Global Change. Presentation will be done by my colleagues Eva Bocerishvili and Bajana Shingelia. Our team has worked a lot on this topic, so good luck, guys. The presentation will be followed by a very interesting panel discussion. We are delighted and honored to have our distinguished guests today. Katarina Hansen, EBR Regional Director, focuses. Evgeny Nashtov, Senior Economist from World Bank. Mercedes Vera Martin, Deputy Division Chief, Mission Chief for Georgia from IMF. From Georgian side, we were supposed to host Nadia Turnava, Minister of Economy and Sustainable Development of Georgia. But unfortunately, due to certain urgent matters, she won't be able to join us today, but she'll be replaced by Irak Andreishvili, Deputy Minister. We'll also host Mr. Mikhail Fidurelli, CEO of Enterprise Georgia. And finally, I'll be also joining the panel myself. Uh, our event today will be moderated by our longstanding partner, Georgi Sakadze, Editor-in-Chief and Managing Partner, Forbes Georgia. I would like to mention that this web conference is attended by international donor organizations, government representatives, diplomatic missions, business associations, as well as a number of large Georgian corporates. Glad to see that there is such a big interest around topics that we'll be discussing today. Now, without further delay, I would like to wish you all an interesting and fruitful conference. Okay, I will start. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for your interest. We at Falcon Taggart are delighted to present our findings today what we think about Georgia's growth model in the context of global changes due to COVID pandemic and the continuous weakness in tourism. Before moving to the presentation, I, I want to mention this the topic is currently widely discussed in the country. We had also very close cooperation with the Ministry of Economy and other state bodies, and I want to use this possibility and thank them for constructive dialogue and cooperation on this issue. Uh, this is the structure of today's presentation. I will talk briefly about macroeconomic context, why we think that growth, change, uh, growth model change is uh, desirable, and my colleague Bachana will continue and uh, he will speak about our findings, so why Georgia needs to enhance the production capacity in agriculture and construction material sectors, and also in which sectors and how to attract uh, FDI. Uh, first point I would like to make about uh, uh, Georgia's economic structure. Uh, four years, uh, growth was driven by services, uh, where tourism was the catalyst and also boosting uh, trade, uh, construction and other services sector sectors. And the result is that uh, the share of services in Georgia's economy increased for, from 60% uh, to almost 80% since uh, 2000, and the right side chart shows the result of this growth uh, model. Uh, goods export base is very low if we exclude four major exported categories, so which are copper, cars, pharmaceuticals, and cigarettes, and whatever is left is like Georgia originated exports, so which have been hovering around 10% of GDP for years despite. Uh, growing number of free trade deals. So this is the reason why we started to think about Georgia's growth model, uh, because uh, we have been reading and uh, speaking a lot how uh, the current crisis will change our uh, lives permanently and uh, economies might uh, become more autonomous. And this uh, the disruption in supply chains and high dependency on imports uh, also mean that suddenly we can't get uh, vital goods and services such as medications or, or, or food and unfortunately we saw this problem here uh, in Georgia as well when food prices, prices increased uh, due to supply chain disruption. So this crisis uh, actually highlights the need of uh, local production, uh, especially in terms of uh, uh, food security and uh, self-sufficiency ratios for the number of products uh, in Georgia are very low. Uh, the second point I, I would like to make about tourism, uh, where value added uh, is lower than many believe. Uh, uh, so over the last five years, uh, tourism revenues almost doubled in the country and reached $3.3 billion in 2019, which is quite high, 18% of GDP. But uh, this tourism revenue dynamics alone does not mean much 
because most of these revenues are directed on experts, on imports to satisfy tourist needs. So it's essential uh, to assess uh, the level of value added the tourist brings in, into the economy. So, and based on our calculations, uh, out of one dollar spent by a tourist in Georgia, only 40 cents remain in the economy, which means that or 60% of total revenues are directed on imports. So we think that this is desirable uh, to increase tourist spending on uh, domestically produced goods and services wherever we have capacity to do so. And my final point is uh, about Georgia's growth model because this crisis forces us to rethink uh, 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 countries' economic capacity and we believe that Georgia uh, has to put on um, put more emphasis on enhancing production capacity, and this and in this regard, we try to answer two two uh, key questions in this in this presentation: in which sectors can we enhance production capacity, and in which sectors and how to attract FDI? And now I uh, give floor to my colleague Bachana, uh, who will uh, speak about our findings uh, based on our analysis. Thank you. Thank you, Eva, and um, good evening, everybody. Uh, so I, I will speak about uh, sectors, and uh, we have identified where we have potential of increasing production. So first of all, uh, to identify sectors where we have production potential, first what we did, we analyzed our trade structure, local demand, uh, and local production. This helped us to uh, uncover some uh, sectors and some directions where ha we have uh, potential to produce more and uh, uh, to produce uh, certain imported items. In 2019, you can see that uh, import uh, uh, of uh, import of Georgia totaled uh, 9.1 billion dollars, of which four major categories, which are highlighted on this slide, you can see construction materials, chemicals, food products, furniture, and clothing. These are the directions where we think that we have uh, opportunity to increase our production by supporting uh, local companies or uh, attracting foreign direct investments. Uh, so uh, during this presentation, uh, we will talk about two major sectors, agriculture and food processing and construction materials. Uh, so firstly, uh, I will move to uh, about our analysis uh, uh, regarding production potential in agriculture and food processing, and then uh, I will uh, move to the other uh, uh, subjects. So first of all, uh, all this, uh, this uh, chart uh, charts illustrate our trade uh, with food products, and you can see on the left, uh, left side uh, chart, you can see that we import uh, last year we imported nine, uh, 1.1 billion dollars worth of food products, while exports to that 0 0.8 billion dollars. Uh, it's uh, important to mention that uh, our import uh, of food products are quite diverse. While uh, vegetable, uh, while uh, beverages, nuts, and fruits uh, make 80 percent of our uh, export. So this is another indication that we need to further diversify our export and use our opportunity of value chain integration of food processing. Uh, so uh, on the next slide, uh, we have uh, like uh, 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 we distinguish several uh, two broad directions where we think that we have production potential. First one is uh, meat and dairy products. We think that we have potential to increase uh, our capabilities of animal farming, which would allow us uh, to produce more. Uh, chicken, pork, or fish. And uh, uh, this increased capacity in animal farming would allow us, us uh, to produce more meat products and daily products. The second broad category uh, where we think that we have production potential is cereals, fruits, and vegetables. Where well, seasonality is also a big challenge for Georgia, and we think this uh, could be addressed by, develop, uh, by developing storage facilities. And on top of this, uh, availability of raw, uh, raw materials would give us uh, uh, opportunity and would give us uh, uh, potential uh, to leverage on value chain integration and uh, to produce processed foods. Uh, it's confectionery, meat products, vegetable, uh, canned foods, and so on. Uh, this uh, is uh, not for only for local demand, but this may be upside potential for export as well. So uh, to use this uh, potential and uh, 
full, 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 uh, to fully use its potential, uh, Georgia needs to address two main issues, land fragmentation and low productivity. On the left side chart, you can see that majority of land owned by farms are less than one hectare, so economy of scale is very low in Georgia. On the uh, right side chart, we have, uh, as an example, cereal yields per hectare. And uh, as you can see, of course, uh, this uh, land fragmentation logically leads to uh, low productivity. And uh, for example, for cereals, you can see that we fall with behind uh, regional countries in terms of productivity. So we hope ongoing land reform and uh, donor uh, support projects uh, could be next step for increasing uh, uh, our agricultural efficiency. So uh, next topic I will talk about, uh, it's uh, our analysis uh, regarding production potential, potential in construction materials. Uh, so first of all, uh, it, it's important to mention that uh, demand for uh, building materials is growing steadily and it will continue so. Uh, based on uh, investment pipeline for next five years, uh, we estimate uh, around uh, 20, 25 billion dollars will be spent on construction from both public and private sectors. So uh, this gives us opportunities that, uh, to use this opportunity and uh, to uh, meet with this, uh, partially meet this demand for, uh, by increasing our local production. And in which direction we think that we have production uh, potential, it, it's mentioned on the following slides. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, I will move to uh, trade structure of construction materials. And as you can see, construction sector is uh, import intensive in 2000, uh, only in 2019, we imported 1.9 uh, uh, billion dollars worth of construction materials, while export is very insignificant. Uh, it's like uh, 0 0.2 billion dollars. Uh, uh, so this is uh, one of the important uh, uh, import uh, import category of Georgian economy and main import categories are wires, cables, machinery, iron and steel, plastics, and uh, so on. So uh, this increasing demand from construction sector uh, uh, incentivized local production uh, during the last years, but it still uh, leg, uh, it still lacks demand. For example, uh, last year uh, local production of construction materials only meet 55% of uh, total demand and, uh, demand and it's important uh, that we, we can use this increasing demand from construction sector and we can leverage on this uh, to uh, we use our potential to increase um, local production. Uh, right now, uh, we, our major, uh, major category of local production are, as you can see on the right side chart, it's rebars, concrete, cement, asphalt, and so on. Uh, now uh, I will, uh, a move to uh, our uh, estimations. Uh, we closely monitor this sector uh, during the last several years, uh, and uh, we think that uh, Georgia has potential uh, to use. Uh, so, uh, generally, uh, our export commodity is characterized by heavily export, we are exporting uh, raw materials and then imp importing uh, finished goods. When we can, when available to raw materials, is giving us chance uh, to leverage on this and to uh, uh, to use our value chain integration and uh, to produce more, not for only local demand but for export as well. Uh, in our view, uh, we have uh, potential in several categories uh, like uh, wires and cables, rebars, plastic materials, furniture, paints, uh, wood materials, and so on. And according to our calculation. Uh, we have uh, opportunity to produce uh, additional 450 million dollars uh, worth of uh, construction materials. Uh, the uh, final part of our pres presentation to, uh, today will be FDI, and we will discuss uh, about ongoing situation uh, regarding FDI globally and uh, our vision how to attract FDI to Georgia. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to mention that uh, this year it's, for, it's projected that uh, global FDI uh, would, will decrease up to 40% according to UNCTAD uh, World Investment Report. So uh, about these ongoing issues, I would like to mention several topics. First of all, decoupling from China. As you know, uh, this uh, process started after US-China trade tensions, which further intensified considering value chain disruption caused by COVID-19. So right now, European and US companies are considering to relocate some of their production uh, capabilities outside China. And so, so this, uh, it is uh, uh, interesting that 
some of this uh, value chain relocation is observed as a form of China's outward direct investment as well. Uh, so uh, right now, regional concentra concentration and uh, uh, shorter value chains are becoming high priority. Uh, so uh, the, because of this situation and ongoing situation, uh, competition for FDI is becoming very first, uh, first and uh, uh, countries need to uh, capitalize on their existing uh, competitive advantages as well as uh, to upgrade their strategy to attract FDI. Uh, so, uh, Georgia's competitive advantages are, as you know, uh, free trade agreements, low taxes, uh, low operating costs, uh, good geographic location, as well as low corruption uh, level. Uh, considering uh, global value chain relocation, coupled with uh, these uh, competitive advantages of Georgia, we think that Georgia have potential uh, to attract FDI in the following sectors. Uh, textile apparel, apparel, laser manufacturing, manufacturing of automobiles and auto parts, production of pharmaceuticals, manufacturing of home electronics, transport and logistics, and business process outsourcing. It's interesting uh, to mention that uh, some of these sectors uh, have already proved successful. For example, textile, all uh, known brands are already produced in Georgia. And the same could be said about uh, business process outsourcing because international brands like Majorel already entered Georgia and they are planning uh, they are uh, planning uh, to expand their presence in Georgia, so it's a good sign. Uh, so uh, uh, this uh, this slide is about uh, shortcomings Georgia should address uh, because uh, uh, there is shortcomings in infrastructure and uh, labor workforce skill set. According to World Economic Forum's Global Competitiveness Index, unfortunately Georgia ranks very poorly. Uh, currently, also education system does not meet labor market requirement uh, and uh, government sees this problem and uh, uh, ongoing education re reform is going to fill this gap. Uh, but uh, future skills, which should be uh, foundation of our education policy is not uh, yet determined. So this is uh, our uh, last uh, slide of the presentation. Uh, here we have presented our view and roadmap to attract FDI. Uh, and uh, I want to mention that we see positives that government recently announced new strategy to attract FDI. And what we learned from our analysis uh, is that successful FDI uh, strategy should uh, uh, should combine the following stages. First of all, uh, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, and we can learn, of course, from successful cases around the world. For example, Ireland, uh, Estonia, Poland, and so on. So uh, we can uh, find out successful investment promotion mechanisms and uh, then it, uh, we can tailor it to Georgia. Second step would be identify uh, sec identification of sectors and potential investor uh, target list companies. And this part is already done by Enterprise Georgia and it's, it's very good and good news. Uh, and of course, uh, we think that uh, this investment uh, after, this, uh, after, ta after targeting uh, these companies, um, the FDI, also, this FDA strategy should be also followed by investment proposals, sector-specific investment proposals. And in our view, sector-specific investment proposals should include several incentives, uh, like uh, tax benefits, uh, target grants, land property, and so on. Uh, the last part would be uh, to start uh, aggressive and ambitious communication strategy uh, to improve George, Georgia's ranking in uh, sector-specific rankings, to use location advisory services, uh, and so on. A high level, uh, we, think, uh, we also think that high level meetings with investors should be part of the strategy as well. Uh, so this is uh, our last slide of our presentation. Hope uh, our presentation was interesting for you. And now I uh, would like to give floor to Georgi Isakadze to continue with the panel discussion. Thank you. Uh, I think everybody can hear me. Thank you so much. Uh, I thanks again to Carlton Taggart and especially Otara, Eva and Bachana for the presentation and everything what has been done. And for uh, thanks again for the opportunity that I'm still a part of this uh, fantastic panel. Uh, and uh, let me introduce again uh, the panelists. Uh, we have uh, Katarina Bjorn Hansen with us. Uh, everybody knows, but again, she's EBRD regional director covering Caucasus. 
We have with us uh, Evgeny, uh, Evgeny Nazdov, he's senior economist from World Bank, Mercedes Vera Martin, deputy uh, division chief, and she's mission chief for Georgia, is the IMF. Uh, great to have uh, on board uh, Irakli Nadareishvili. Irakli is uh, deputy minister, uh, deputy minister of economy and sustainable development of Georgia. Hello again, Irakli. Great to have you with us. And uh, we have uh, Mikhail Hidurelli, uh, the head of uh, Enterprise Georgia, with us. And I think he is the CEO, actually, the, of the Enterprise of Georgia. And actually, I think I can also present uh, Mr. Tony Kazirakishvili as well. He's going to be accompanying him on panel as well as a deputy CEO of Enterprise Georgia. Of course, uh, we have with us uh, Otar Sharikadze, who is managing uh, director of Galten Tagart, who created this panel and idea, and together with uh, contributors and authors, is with us. And uh, the price, uh, what uh, for the technical disconnect, will be paid by the CEO of the largest Georgian bank, Bank of Georgia CEO Archil Kachichiladze, will not be just greeting us; he will be as a panelist with us, and so, Archil, thank you again, and uh, thank you for being with us. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, interesting is really huge, and trust me, it's not because of the moderator. All of you can uh, watch or follow me every day, every morning, so it's not because of me, it's because of you, and we have a quite interesting topic and uh, what I can see is that uh, Galton Taggart team did a, a really great job and once again I'm uh, so much uh, thankful and delighted presenting this uh, honorable panel. Uh, by the way, uh, just for the beginning, uh, Irakli, Misha and Tonike, uh, my, my, my congrats and uh, I'm also very happy with the presentation what has been held just three hours ago about Cartley Textile Enterprise, uh, which was uh, uh, presented, let me say so, by uh, Prime Minister and Minister of Economy. And uh, it's gonna be like fourth unit from this group. Uh, first was in Achara. I think it was started like uh, uh, six or nine years ago, uh, am I right? And uh, now it's already fourth unit, which is going to be fulfilled in four months, and it will create additionally 3,000 jobs in textile direction, which means that it will gain tremendous. And uh, Enterprise Georgia is a part of this activity, correct? Yes. You can join if you want so. Okay, then let, let me begin with uh, as it was scheduled. So uh, what really worries me, uh, I, I will begin uh, with a question which might cover uh, all of you, I mean all, all the panelists, what we have is that uh, what we see, what we face, we've talked a lot uh, about this with uh, uh, Mercedes while having Forbes talks with her as well, and thanks again to her for joining this, with Archil, who was actually our first respondent in this regard, that economists uh, are becoming uh, let me say so, a bit uh, like uh, more autonomous, focusing on regional concentration, we see less solidarity, less opening, and we see more concentration uh, of supply chains and uh, like meeting for regional demands as well. But this topic is really discussed quite widely, but uh, I really want to uh, understand what is your personal view on this issue. And I want to begin with, uh, Mercedes Vera Martin. Uh, Mercedes, if I may, to begin with it, but uh, all other panelists, please keep this question. I will definitely repeat it for you, but that's gonna be like a beginning for all of us. Go ahead. Just, just, un Mercedes, please unmute. Yeah, just a minute. Yes. Good afternoon, okay. everybody. It's a pleasure to be here, and I want to thank you, Otari, for the kind invitation to be part of this panel. Um, Georgi, as you mentioned, I think that the, the, there is a lot of discussion about what will happen to the supply chains uh, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic shock. And what we have seen is that the synchronized uh, nature of the downturn has resulted in a significant disruption in global trade, 
that has declined uh, year on year by almost 4% in the first quarter of 2020. And, and this has reflected in part supply dislocations related to the shutdowns that we have seen across the different economies. Um, of course, the COVID-19 is being sold globally across different operations. Uh, companies and corporates are trying to assess the reallocation of supply chains, and maybe there will be a refocusing into more regional supply chains. Uh, the way we see it is that probably it is premature to assess the full impact of what is happening, and we are monitoring how the corporate sector is reassessing the reallocation of, of the, their operations. In this regard, uh, there is a parallel process, which is a process that I started with deglobalization or questioning the value of globalization. And that could be accelerated as a result of the shock. So is it possible that uh, the, the supply chains become more regional? Yes, I think so. There is a reason. And, uh, I think uh, we will need to think also about the implications in terms of uh, paying some premium uh, for holding capacity at the regional level. In this context, I think that Georgia has some potential to be part of these regional supply chains, not only because of the logistical location of Georgia, uh, but also because of, as we mentioned, the free trade agreement with Europe and China. I will leave it at that. Okay, thank you so much. Katerina, uh, great to have you with us again. And so uh, please share with us your views on these particular issues like uh, uh, regional concentration of supply chains and all the things what has been mentioned. Where do you see uh, Georgia, for, for Georgia it as an opportunity to cover? Well, um, I, I have said, first I have to say I really agree with Mercedes, what she just said. And to add, I think there will probably be, depending on, on what company the company's profiles are, uh, supply chains may become much more localized to, to ensure that there is always supply. The other option is, of course, to diversify supply chains much more than you have today. If you are a very big company, this is possible. To diversify supply chains, not only over different countries, but possibly also over different continents uh, to ensure that you have unin uninterrupted supply uh, at all times. Uh, your choice of path here probably depends on uh, the size of the company, where you're based, uh, your sector, and so forth, and also your financial strength. But, it, but it's, it's, it's interesting options because they're completely opposite. So uh, I think we all wish we had a crystal ball. Uh, we don't. Uh, but it will be interesting to read about this period and, and the development uh, over the next uh, couple of years um, in, in, in times to come. Um, I think yeah. that that's my, yeah, my yeah, thanks, 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 uh, thanks, Katarina. Uh, my next question is to Mr. Nazdo Evgeny. Great to have you with us. Uh, so uh, we're following a few blogs, remarks, uh, some surveys coming also from the World Bank. You are representing as a uh, senior economist. Uh, there were also some cautious and uh, some remarks in these regards. Uh, like uh, economies are becoming more autonomous. Uh, how do you see uh, potential of the further development and uh, what is your personal view in this regards, particularly for Georgia? Uh, thank you very much, Georgi. Uh, well, I think I will uh, agree with uh, Mercedes and with uh, Katarina. Uh, it's a bit too early um, to say, uh, but you know, th th there are certain experiences uh, already that we can maybe draw some inferences from. Uh, so I, our team recently looked at, for example, what happened to uh, in response to the 2011 Japan, the earthquake in Japan. And actually they did find that um, um, companies that relied a lot on Japan um, actually did move out uh, their suppliers away from Japan. But what they didn't find is that they move their supplies closer to home or within their country. So at the end of the day, I mean, it was more of a reconfiguration of supply chains rather than reshoring. So we didn't see a reshoring, but more uh, of a re reconfiguration. I think a similar episode a few years later was in Thailand with the floods uh, when uh, actually production moved to 
uh, to countries uh, in the region. And I think in that particular case, some of the earlier speakers made an interesting point that it was the Thai, the Thai companies themselves that went out. Um, uh, and I think uh, one of your um, speakers alluded to the Chinese uh, outward investment maybe uh, in reconfiguring the uh, supply. So uh, yes, uh, I think we'll see uh, some reconfiguration. Uh, it's not going to be in the short term. Um, uh, global uh, value chains are sticky. Uh, that's why we actually see the problems. If they were not sticky, then people will immediately move to the next supplier, but they are. Uh, investments are customer specific. Uh, businesses are firm to firm relations. So it will be uh, some time because before these changes are actually um, uh, taking place and they can go uh, in, in various direction with, as I said, uh, re, uh, reconfiguration in some way. Uh, so what is different from the examples I gave, uh, Japan and Thailand, is that now we are in an environment when global value chains were actually slowing down even before COVID. As uh, Mercedes mentioned, we were in an area uh, era of deglobalization already, so trade policies uh, are not really the most conducive towards uh, value chains. Um, and also we have uh, automation and 3D printing. Uh, so that's also something that people feel is a threat to value chains. Again, our recent research shows that uh, actually automation and 3D printers uh, increase trade. So um, uh, a lot of unknowns, uh, but um, uh, uh, but we are likely to be to see some changes in investment patterns uh, going forward. Uh, I can just say who is going to benefit, probably countries that are open to FDI, countries that are open to trade, countries that have political and macroeconomic stability and have a predictable business environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course, we should not forget about the role of comparative advantage in all of this. So Georgia meets a lot of these uh, things. You can attract uh, some of this uh, investment, uh, but whether it will make the full list of, uh, uh, of things, or we should concentrate our efforts. I'll leave that discussion uh, for, for, the, for the further questions and topics. Thank you, Evgeny. Uh, same question goes to uh, Irakli Nadarishvili, Deputy Minister of Economy. We really want to know uh, his personal point of view and uh, thoughts of the Georgian government in these regards. How uh, do you see this prospect to just a minute, Irakli? We'll just Unmute it just to hear your voice. Ragli, I think you can unmute to yourself as well. No chance. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, yeah. fine. So, Go ahead. Let's let's Thank you, Georgi. Uh, thanks to Garth and Tagar for having myself and my colleagues from uh, Enterprise Georgia on this panel. And thank you for a very interesting um, presentation, especially uh, it is very pleasant that uh, most of the aspects and the findings that we have seen at this presentation uh, very well uh, reflect uh, the um, uh, the views, the approaches, and the findings, and the strategy that we have on our side. And there, there are no sides, uh, actually, on the side of the government. And uh, it, it corresponds both to the FDI attraction, also to the sectors, and uh, basically the programs and uh, all the activities that uh, the government is undertaking during this uh, period is a very good example and proof that we, we have absolutely the same uh, approach and views. And th this is mainly the, due to the very, very good um, uh, dialogue between the government and the uh, business, specifically at this period of time, because I can assure you and many of the colleagues who participate and who look at the look to this panel uh, can prove that almost every program that has been adopted uh, was the subject of very detailed discussion with the business sector, uh, specifically on particular uh, sectors would this be tourism or development or uh, manufacturing or so on. But um, to your question, Georgi, uh, I think that yes. um, although there is a tendency of gradual easing of economy 
um, uh, restrictions and uh, the recovery. Um, uh, the uh, the best way to describe the current situation, and I think everybody uh, will agree with me, is the radical uncertainty. Uh, and this corresponds both to the existing situation and to the uh, global projections. Uh, and there is no doubt that the global economy will reshape and is already reshaping uh, because of the coronavirus. And what is already observable uh, is the importance of alternative supply chains and uh, regional concentration, as my colleagues uh, mentioned, and I totally agree with them. Uh, we know that before pandemic, countries and the multinational companies were trying to build most efficient supply chains through integrating lowest cost producers uh, in the uh, supply chain. But this, uh, during the period of pandemic, this has proved not to be resilient and uh, somehow insufficiently diversified uh, supply chains uh, proved to be uh, non-effective uh, in, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the global uh, circumstances of pandemic. So I think that countries will definitely need to find better balance between taking advantage of globalization on one hand and the necessary degree of uh, self-reliance. Um, I would say that some tendencies of this transformation can be already observed and as was discussed and is widely discussed those days, we see that countries try to strengthen their manufacturing sectors, uh, build multiple supply chain systems and support agricultural productions. And I would say that Georgian does the same and the, the accents that Georgian government is uh, making over this um, uh, crisis and starting post crisis period clearly reflects the same tendencies. And uh, I think that uh, we, we, we have here to use the advantage of one hand, on one hand to uh, strengthen the uh, local production in multiple directions. And I think we will have a chance to discuss the directions in details uh, during today's conversations and also to benefit from attracting the FDI because of this global reshaping and movement of supply chains and um, uh, value chains around the globe in different uh, um, uh, sectors uh, through different continents and geography. And, uh, and important here is that Georgia uh, specifically targets uh, and uses the advantages that it has in order to benefit best from this uh, situation. And this also, of course, comes to the strategy, how we do this, who we target, which sectors, which companies, how we address them, what is the value proposition that we can offer them, and so on and so forth. But I will stop here now. Uh, again, uh, with the hope that I will have a chance to discuss particular directions in more details with my colleagues. Thank you. Yes, we do have time for that. Thank you so much, Iraklif. Uh, uh, I want to move to my next question, but if the other panelists like Archil, uh, Otari, or uh, Misha with Tornik, uh, they, <coughs> they want to have a word in this regards about the, how global economy really goes forward. You might uh, just enter and say a few remarks. If not, I have the next question going to Enterprise Georgia. Archil, Otar, you fine with it? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Misha, yeah, Archil, go ahead. You want to say something, yeah? Am I right? Just unmute, uh, just, just a minute, just unmute the button. You, you're here, you're with us, go ahead. Yes, uh, if you can hear me, I'll try to be short. Uh, I would like to uh, apologize for dropping out, first of all, it was uh, an internet cutoff, which uh, really feels like uh, suffocation nowadays. Well, in enough for the disconnection, uh, so. No in in this world of connected world, uh, being disconnected is really a bad feeling. Um, so I would like to start with thank you to to the international donors uh, in this difficult situation with COVID-19. I think um, IMF and EBRD and World Bank are really the three uh, heavyweights, so to say, of all the IFIs that have supported Georgia. And I would personally like to thank each of you who are present here because uh, we have been in touch from the in the very early days of uh, COVID-19 crisis as it was unfolding um, and uh, your support has been instrumental really in terms of uh, going through this although we are not through this but you know in this process your support has been much appreciated by by everybody all of us um, I would also like to thank Georgian government 
um, which is not very often you hear that from me, but the handling of COVID-19 by the Georgian government has been outstanding. I mean, it's, it's, it's really uh, just to demonstrate the point, you really have to look at the map and see what's going on in, uh, in the neighboring countries. Some are hit a little bit more, some less, but really the comparison is, is, is like uh, uh, quite dramatic. And, and what Georgia has managed to do so far, and we should make sure that we don't relax there, is incredible. Uh, with the leadership of Prime Minister, uh, who has demonstrated a pretty incredible crisis management skills. Uh, and the whole team, I think, has done a very good job. Um, and Ministry of Economy has, has done already and launched some very good programs with Iraqis' uh, leadership. And Mikhail Hidurelli has also done very incredible and interesting initiatives in terms of supporting Georgian businesses. So uh, all in all, pretty, pretty, pretty good stuff. Uh, now, like every crisis, or like a good saying goes, never let a good crisis be wasted. So uh, when we think about it, you know, what are the opportunities in this crisis? And the opportunities are such that I'm a believer that the market forces really, really do exist and they do change the world. And when you think about it, as the, as the tourism was, was increasing and the investments have been increasing in the last some of the last few years, we've seen that imports have been increasing as well of construction material, of other uh, food stuff. And I'm, I'm a believer that after, let's say, five years or three years or five years, uh, uh, a private, private company would probably find an opportunity and do something about it. But the question is, can it be done right now? Because as the economy has slowed down, and, and right now I think we have a little bit of time to focus on it and, and maybe help some uh, private uh, entities to to uh, identify those opportunities as as the as the um, tourism come back in a year or two. Um, this this let's say the imports uh, and and the demand strong demand will will be there, and that's an opportunity for private investors to do something about it. And I think that's what the conference and, and discussion is all about and, and that's fantastic but there's also something that, um, uh, that the government can do a um, little bit um, and that something is is all about systemic changes um, I specifically would would like to draw attention to the court system we all discuss it but you know more improvement of the better because we still have court cases that are lasting for three four sometimes six years still unresolved. So that is definitely a, a burden. And if, if that is, um, let's say, made lighter, I think it would be even more attractive for investors to come in. Um, as well as when, when new regulation is introduced, a lot of discussion has been about introducing regulatory impact assessment. And that has been put in place, but it's somehow avoided in most cases. So when new regulation comes in, regulatory impact assessment, is not really working for, for different reasons. Uh, mostly it's, it's uh, there, there are ways to get around it and that's, that's what it is. Uh, and, and the third one is, is to do more about the education and that's high school education because I really believe that this technological change, especially us getting more comfortable with using distance working, um, Zoom and other, other facilities has, will increase um, internet, let's say the, the cross-border service export, and that is more people working from their homes, from their computers, and selling their, their labor uh, over the computer to, to international employers. And that's already, it was already happening. It just got accelerated probably 10 times. So if and when we get better in terms of our English skills, in terms of our primary education, first of all, our high school education, and then later on, probably uh, post post high school education, I think we have a fantastic opportunity for the new younger generation not to leave Georgia to go and work abroad, but really stay in their homes and 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 sell their their skills and their time to international developers. So all these, I think, are opportunities, and I will end here um, uh, because I think this. 
plenty to celebrate in terms of uh, handling this 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 COVID-19 crisis. Uh, to say the least, I mean, when you know Armenia is very similar in terms of the size, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and and I have very good friends, Armenian friends that live in Yerevan. I'm on the phone with them. I mean, their life is very different from our life because they are constantly worried. We are not in that situation largely because of the way government handled it and how people stood up in terms of, you know, really following some of the some of the rules that they had to. So it's incredible, and it's 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 good selling points too when you talk to the investors. But let's not forget some of the things that that has been mentioned. I think represent a fantastic opportunity for for us to really think what we can change to to improve our lives. On that, I think I will not take more of your time. Thank you. I, I am a bit triggered. You know, he he he. The picture is much broader what Archie has uh, right now covered than uh, it was actually is, uh, our presentation. But thanks for this uh, intro and uh, your uh, your personal. Uh, I mean, point of view in this regard. So uh, my next question, as it was uh, promised, goes to Mikhail Hidurelli and Tornik Ezirakishvili, his deputy. They are together, Enterprise Georgia. So uh, my first question to you guys is quite simple. You are very well aware about this presentation, about this study, which was done by Galt and Taggart. Uh, you've been working together uh, I mean, various governmental bodies uh, while Galt was in the preparation of this presentation. And uh, in this regard, both the stimulation of uh, local companies and, uh, uh, and the attraction of foreign investments are crucial. So that's, that's quite a resume for the beginning, what we can highlight from the presentation. And uh, what's your view, General, on this presentation? Uh, I know that some parts are ongoing and covered already, but at the same time, we do face some uh, challenges because Georgian economy is still services driven, and which already did it and contributed quite a lot to the growth and employment. But at the same time, we do face some challenges. So Misha, floor is yours and go ahead. Thank you, Georgi. Thank you, Archil, and thank you, Otar, for organizing this uh, very interesting and timely uh, online conference. Uh, uh, first of all, I'll say that um, we are very happy that the, the sectors that your presentation has highlighted is fully aligned with the strategy, with the FDI attraction strategy, which um, we have since the end of 2019. You know that we've done this very uh, tremendous and uh, hard work with IFC and uh, you can see it, it's public, it's on our website, so you can see this detailed um, presentation about the uh, target companies, about the sectors, why we chose them, and why we think that Georgia has a competitive advantage in those sectors. Equally important for us is the local production. So I totally agree with Archil in saying that companies will need more stimulation to start the business and they have to be more daring. Uh, for us, unfortunately, we don't have a luxury to choose between the local production or FDI. We need both of them. We need local production for job creation, but we need FDI for knowledge sharing. There are some sectors where without FDI, it would be really hard to you know, innovate or generate the knowledge yourself. Uh, so we don't have, the, for example, a, an interesting uh, fact I always say is that, for example, I was once in Czech Republic where Czech Invest has to kind of close the FDI attraction process for one year. They need to pause because of the decision um, uh, that, for, in, in their opinion, FDI was saturated in their country. Unfortunately for us, any kind of business activity uh, is necessary. And we do not prioritize, let's say, between the export promotion or, and import substitution. We always say that. For our programs, for our Enterprise Georgia programs, both of them are equally important. We have very interesting cases uh, that Georgi mentioned. For example, a coach cable, a cable production company has started with importing a lot of cables and now they have started to uh, manufacture it themselves. So we have cases that companies are only concentrating on the local production, but we have cases that companies started with local production and they have concurred some other uh, export markets. So for us, for Enterprise Georgia, with our portfolio, uh, we are working on an equal balance between the FDIs and local production companies. You know that we have funded more than 500 projects out of them. 
150 hotels and another 350 other factories. And these are the factories that are uh, the stimulating Georgian economy. And I think without our programs, uh, it, will be, it will be really wrong to say that none of them would do it anyway. But I think for most of them, for 90% of the companies who have been surveyed by us, our program was a stimulation to either start it now rather than five years later or to start it at all. So especially now when companies need more stimulation, I think uh, our decision to, let's say, uh, to improve the package that we had, and now we finance the companies not for two years, but three years. We have also increased the percentage of the interest rate that we subsidize, and we also, uh, let's say, expanded the business varieties that we fund. I think all of that has been very successfully assimilated by the business sector, and we have already success cases. Achara Textile, the Cutley Textile, sorry, was one of the first cases with our new program to be uh, registered. Okay, let me divert my question uh, in the following way. Uh, I st I'm still with you, Misha. Uh, this question goes again to you. Uh, Gauss Tagart, I'm just highlighting, uh, sees production growth potential in uh, various directions. And uh, one of them is uh, agriculture, and another one is construction industries. Do you see, as a representative of the state agency, the same potential in these sectors, or are there other or new sectors that the country should focus on? Uh, we are talking about concrete priorities. Thanks for your intro and uh, general responding on my first question. But let's go to some sectoral discussion as well, please. Yes, Georgi, I will gladly dive in. Uh, so for uh, the sectors that uh, Galton Tagger identified, we are absolutely aligned there as well. You know that by the end of 2019, we have, let's say, uh, reformed our uh, program and we have opted out from uh, financing uh, construction materials manufacturing sector. Uh, and also we have opted out from uh, food processing and the idea was that we saw that uh, there was a demand on construction materials from the private sector and there was no more need to inject, let's say, government money. Because at the end of the May, our main priority, to, uh, main priority is to be, uh, let's say, a cost effective because we are not talking about a fund, we are talking about the government budget. But now after pandemic, we saw a need to, uh, let's say, come back to the status quo and we have again expanded it. So, uh, but we have just done a new thing. So for food processing, uh, there will be another agency, which is also a very big agency having a big portfolio. It's called ARDA. It's under the Ministry of Agriculture. They will be funding, with the similar programs, they will be funding food processing businesses. And at the same time, they will be giving out subsidies. And on the same loan, we will be guaranteeing, guaranteeing the collateral. So this is a very unique case when an entrepreneur can get two things at the same time. One is subsidy from the Ministry of Agriculture and another one is a credit guarantee from Ministry of Economy. This means that basically uh, a lot of businesses will have uh, an opportunity and will have an advantage to, to start this type of business. And, uh, and I think it's important because we also saw that uh, we need to be self-sustainable, especially in FMB and food and beverage, right? Another thing, uh, construction materials, uh, again, I see that it was one of the biggest part of our portfolio. So if you see all the factories that we have funded, a biggest part of that goes on the construction materials production, which we have posed, but which we have re-entered again. Regarding the other niche things, um, I think companies, uh, I mean, as long as our portfolio is quite broad and we don't restrict any type of business variety, uh, companies are assimilating this and we have very interesting uh, uh, projects funded like uh, we have talked about it with Georgi many times on Forbes stock. For example, it's like um, uh, domestic animals, uh, pets, uh, furniture, pet food, uh, different kind of furniture, leather, uh, bags and this kind of stuff. So I think everything else is a part of the business model. So government is prioritizing the sectors. It's quite broad, but again, what type of business you choose, I think it's a part of the business plan and innovations. Okay, now, uh, um, my next question goes to Otar Sharikadze, Managing Director of Galt and Taggart. Uh, again, many thanks to you and your team 
for this fantastic presentation and survey. Uh, at the same time, we both know, and we are quite often covering uh, the ongoing operational coming, uh, especially from the government, uh, especially from the enterprise Georgia activities and things like that. The big picture, what was right now presented by uh, the CEO of enterprise Georgia, where do you see the benefits coming from your survey, which might uh, help assist and uh, give additional boost to uh, what they are doing day by day. Thank you, Georgi, for the interesting question. Thank you all for being here. It's an honor to host you, of course. Uh, actually, I'll start a bit from the uh, essence of our, of our report, basically, where it came from. Uh, actually, we, we identified that throughout the years, tourism has been driving Georgian economy, and we saw the influx of uh, direct investments as well as actual measures. But throughout the years, there was this big question of where, where was this value going? Because people didn't feel the same amount of value coming into the country as the figures of tourism inflows in the country. So we asked the question where this money was going. So in, in our report, you would see that we estimate that $100 spent by tourists, $60 goes out on import goods. So we, we, we identified this is a key issue for the country. So when you mentioned what Enterprise Georgia has been doing successfully throughout the years and the country, this is one thing as a strategy of developing the country, but we identified an issue which we think should be fixed. I think it additionally brings this policy on more, on more, on an unsend, let's say, that this should be done in a, in a more aggressive way because we are losing opportunity. We're losing opportunities, all this money which comes in and Georgian companies are working hard to attract tourists and I think they'll need to work much harder in the coming years we need to retain this money in the country, be it by, 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 by producing locally or by importing less, let's say. So we went in two, two, two directions. On one hand, we looked at the import and at the local production, and we chose, let's say, easy picks. I mean, it's not really easy picks, but let's say two sectors which were quite evident. Georgia has been an has been agricultural country for years, but on the other hand, we looked at the productivity, and there is a big lack on that side. So, so we see that there is a huge reform, there's a huge need of reform over there. And I'm very glad that the government has announced already that they are going down this road. And one of the major aspects of this reform will be, I think, the, 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 the registration of lands. So this will help, I think, increase productivity. On the other hand, when you look at the, at the portfolio of, uh, of pipeline of uh, pro projects which should be done in the construction industry, it's also huge. So even if we manage to take a short, small part of the 25 billion, I think the, we would really feel it on an economic and GDP growth base. So I think these were two easy picks that we identified, but obviously there are other industries like textile or other industries where years before we would not even believe that there is potential, but there are companies which are successfully working on the market, such as Elbit Systems, which are producing composite products in Georgia, which would have never been done in Georgia before. So th there are new opportunities as well that could be done here. On a more global global picture, let's say, if we go back to the um, what COVID kind of triggered in the, in the global trigger and change in the economic structure, we believe that if a couple of years ago, uh, most of big international companies would not ask question of relocating and they had other issues, other problems on their mind, today they might be asking the question whether their supply chains are correctly put in place. Because we hear a lot saying about these pandemics will go, but there'll be other pandemics which will come. And they'll clearly be looking for safe places which proved successfully how to manage pandemics. And Georgia is the case. Archil, I think, correctly mentioned, I think if we were in February, nobody would have believed if I told you that Georgia would manage this crisis in this way. I mean, nobody would believe. And we can do it. And I think only, only from an investor's perspective, there is one thing on profitability and capability of the country to produce certain goods. But on the other hand, once the crisis comes, and we'll be, we see that crisis come regularly, and the time frame between the crisis, unfortunately, shortening in the recent years, I think it's important to show that the country can withstand crisis. And I think it's a very significant new benefit that we can put on the table besides other huge lists of benefits that Georgia already has. So I think it's a very important to capitalize on this strength that Georgia has today. That's in a short what I could, what I could say to the, to the policy of the government and to our willingness to bring it a bit more further, let's say. Can uh, I add a point, small point there, Georgi? 
Um, so I was stuck in New York for a few months and just arrived two weeks ago. And I was, as I was coming into Tbilisi, I felt coming from New York that I was coming to a safe country. And when you think about it, you know, think any kind of dimension coming from New York to Tbilisi, is it defense, is it economy, court system? It's hard to think that, you know, it was possible to think that you would be coming from New York to Tbilisi and thinking, okay, I'm, I'm arriving into a safe place. And that's the difference in terms of how Georgian government has handled this crisis, that some people may now think that they are coming to a safe country. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, exactly. Uh, what are the key findings so what you, uh, you create personally for yourself through this presentation? I know that you were part of all the activities coming from uh, Enterprise Georgia and other activities which are coordinated within the Georgian government. Misha has mentioned the direction of ARDA within the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, other agencies. Uh, now uh, we should make a bit uh, bigger picture what uh, Misha has just mentioned that uh, it's a broader picture. It's not just Enterprise Georgia. It's much bigger and what is covered and where, where, where do you see the benefits and key findings coming from the uh, Galten Target Survey study? Thank, thank, thank you, Georgi. You, you can hear me, right? Yes, yes. Uh, well, uh, the, there was a question about the two sectors, uh, namely agriculture and construction. Correct, that was my and question about priorities priorities construction industries. Yeah, and if uh, there were any other sectors that uh, are also prioritized, then the, the answer on both questions uh, is, is yes. Definitely, agriculture and construction are the um, uh, uh, priority sectors. And uh, I absolutely agree. This is uh, absolutely clear that the productivity of agriculture is, uh, is, is very low. I mean, we have almost 50% of our population informally employed in, in this sector and the, the, the sector contributes around 9% of GDP to the, to the Georgian economy. But if we look at the recent uh, figures, uh, the, the, uh, there is a positive dynamics in, in terms of growth of this sector, in terms of increased productivity, in terms of increased export of agricultural products. Also what we can subjectively uh, observe, the quality and the interest of large business, big investors into this sector, which is promising because the, uh, this sector lacks many aspects, of course, uh, and the list is, is really long. And, but on the other hand, if you look at the, again, at the programs of uh, ARDA in this case and the Ministry of Agriculture, every program and the list of the programs on the agriculture sector is maybe twice as, as long as the uh, list of programs that we have uh, in, in Enterprise Georgia. And this, the, this also reflects uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the size of the budget, which is, uh, which is also significant. Uh, the, there is a huge lack of technology and knowledge in this sector, which is, uh, which is targeted by the governmental programs. There is a uh, problem of uh, land, uh, se um, uh, separate, uh, small land plots, which is absolutely correctly was um, underlined in the presentation. And this is targeted by cooperatives and other tools which are uh, targeting the, this, pro the, the, this problem. There is, a, uh, there is an issue of um, um, heavy machinery tractors and uh, different machinery which is, uh, which is unavoidable to have on place on, on, on certain amount in order to increase the uh, capacity and uh, reach the quality which is necessary. Also innovation technology and many other aspects. Um, uh, as regard to the construction, again, the construction uh, segment was one of the fastest growing along with the tourism sector. We all know the, 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 the figures of the growth of the sector. And the value chain of the sector is probably one of the longest and most complicated. This was the one of the reasons why uh, we introduced at a uh, later stage of our uh, of the government's um, uh, response to the COVID, the program of uh, which was specifically targeting the development sector. 
And uh, we all know that, uh, again, the value chain is very long. This is construction materials, construction services, development, uh, furniture business, uh, so on and so forth. M -m many, many uh, related businesses are sourcing from this value chain. And this was the, uh, probably the very uh, unique and first time program when we decided to uh, support not the uh, sector directly as we do for, with, um, uh, uh, with tourism, for instance, or we do with um, uh, production of uh, you know, different sorts of foods. Uh, we we, we uh, targeted the um, demand side of the uh, of this market, and uh, you know that we have introduced uh, three programs, which three of them, three of them already are operational. Uh, this is the subsidizing of the mortgage loans on this side of the uh, client. This is the uh, guarantee uh, guarantee scheme of the mortgage loan in terms of depreciation and the uh, credit guarantee sort of. Uh, scheme and also the um, put option uh, we, we, at the amount of 200 million lari, which will uh, issue the um, uh, some sort of uh, guarantees on the uh, acquisition of the uh, um, uh, flats once completed. In case the developer uh, developer will struggle to uh, struggle to sell these uh, flats to the free market. So. Uh, again, this uh, yeah. underlines that the uh, construction business is of priority and uh, the fact that we have um, uh, put back the very long list of construction material manufacturing in, the, in other programs of Enterprise Georgia is also a very good example. One more thing that I want to mention. Yes. We, uh, if, before I will move to with a question to Katarina, my uh, my pre question is: uh, Otari just has mentioned that if we'll take just a very brief statistics from uh, the presentation, uh, we generate. Uh, I'm sorry, we generated 3.3 .3 billion last year just from tourism industry and sector itself. And uh, if we take the calculation, what was presented, it's just 1 billion what Georgia gains locally here and all the rest roughly, roughly. I mean, all the rest like 2.3 million goes for financing of the import goods. You as a, a deputy minister of economy, do you see that it's a proper time to think about more uh, productive uh, form of our economy, which is still service driven right now, right today, is, and is it a time and momentum while pandemic challenges are still in phase, that it's a momentum to think about it, to make some diverts already or not? The, the question is to me, right, Georgi? Yes, correct, uh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I, I, was about, I was about to shift to, to, to this part of the question. Uh, besides uh, uh, those two uh, sectors, of course, we are uh, considering the, the wider range of the sectors which are worth of our attention and uh, worth working with the investors to, to attract and, uh, first of all, to understand on, on our side what is the uh, potential, what are the tools and what are the advantages that we, we should put together in one value proposition for every single uh, sector. and uh reach out the the investor not only uh foreign investors but also local investors in, in order to 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 attract to this sector what i was about to say uh, mm -hmm. this was mainly to construction but also uh, the, 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 this uh, this uh, field is much larger than just construction business we are undertaking a fundamental reshaping of the mining policy right now with the great support of world bank and this corresponds to the introduction of the mine, mining law, new mine law, uh, also the new royalty system, uh, which will be very close to the international practice and will, will reflect the today's needs of both Georgian economy and international investors, because this, this sector, the mining sector, is very international and we, we do expect to attract much more international investors in this sector. Although the, the, we have the agency already three years uh, existing with very, very strong record of success cases and with big steps towards opening up, towards um, uh, transparency and uh, opening uh, the 
databases which were very close and very, you know, uh, kept safe uh, from the reach of the uh, regular investors in, in, in uh, years before. Now it's, uh, now, now it's changing. And just a couple of words about the sectors we are targeting, but I'm sure my colleagues, uh, Misha and Tornika, will, will have a chance to cover them uh, in more details. We have very successful cases in, in BPO sector, and um, specifically today when the uh, working uh, on a distance, providing services uh, from uh, different countries through different uh, channels becoming more uh, interesting. We, we have the uh, cases of uh, extension and uh, opening up uh, new uh, facilities in the PO sector, specifically within the period of uh, COVID pandemic. <clears throat> we have uh, already mentioned textile industry, which is uh, continuing, to, continuing to expand uh, over the Georgia and has very high uh, labor ratio, which is very important to, to cover as much uh, employment as possible. Uh, and both of these sectors are, are um, um, employment, uh, employment okay. <laughs> they have high capacity of employment, which is important to, uh, you know, to, to target at this Thank situation you. when many jobs are lost and people is struggling to relocate to different sectors and different industries. Thanks, Irakli. Uh, well, uh, Katerina, I'm terribly sorry. I missed uh, uh, Mercedes' involvement, her requirement just to enter for the remark, and I will definitely be back in, to you in a minute. Mercedes, the floor is yours. You wanted to have some sort of remark, and your go ahead. Just a minute. No, 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 no. You, you should help me with the mute button. Unmute button, please. Uh, thank you, Georgi. I will be very brief. I just wanted to... I mean, it's a very interesting discussion about where, where Georgia has potential for development, but I think it's important to keep in mind that where a country produces and export is part of, is a result of the productivity a structure, the know-how and the institutions. And I think, uh, um, you know, the, the service sector is, uh, first of all, cannot be dismissed because the tourists will come back. That, to the extent of how quickly they will come back will depend on the vaccine. Then there is also high qualified or uh, high quality sectors. Not all the sectors are low paid, low capacity or low, low qualifications uh, services. So I think there is potential also, as Archil or some of the panelists were mentioned before, there is a scope also to have more value added services and uh, being able to, to profit from that. Um, and I think in, in, in designing the capacity, the comparative advantage or, or, or where, where Georgia has potential, one has to think about doing so in a competitive setting so that we can do import substitution, definitely, as long as Georgia is able to, or the corporate in Georgia remain competitive vis-a-vis -vis the global the global environment. I think it's important that, as other panelists have mentioned, in, in agriculture, it benefits from economies of scale and higher productivity. The land reform is a step in the right direction, but it, has, it, it probably needs to be accelerated. And then, in terms of the development of the construction sector, I think it's very important to identify your demand, because in construction sector, you have part of the production that is going for internal demand and another part that is targeting external demand and tourists. And, and you need to make sure that you don't end up with overcapacity in the sector. And the final point that I want to make is that I think it's very important that the government plays the, the role of being an enabler of private sector development in a competitive setting. So there are, there are reasons maybe in the current environment with the global shock and the deceleration that we are seeing uh, in the global economy to provide some support, but this should be only temporary and gradually uh, removed uh, as the economy recovers. I think it's very important, as Archil mentioned, that uh, continue to improve the business environment uh, remains uh, on the right track that requires improving the skills of the labor force and education reform is very important in the case of Georgia. Also dispute resolution and also 
promoting an environment that is conducive to innovation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Katarina. I, I, I'm, uh, we're back, thank you again. Uh, are you a part of the idea that Georgia needs a new strategy to attract uh, FDI, especially considering increased competition globally? And what are the challenges and opportunities for Georgia? Please. Um, I think uh, a strategy, any strategy uh, uh, would, would benefit from an update every now and again. And now it's actually a very good time to do it. Uh, first and foremost, because any companies uh, thinking about, say, outsourcing uh, may think uh, in different terms now than they, than they did half a year ago. So if before you would look at, um, uh, I mean, different, whatever input you need, now I think health aspects would also come into, into consideration for any company looking at the potential destination for, for their investments. Um, there are also, uh, but there are challenges, of course, because right now Georgia is in a very, very good position and Georgia is emerging out of the crisis, while many other countries are either just coming into the crisis or at the height of the crisis. So the challenge for Georgia right now is to uh, spot the, company, uh, the countries where the mentality is going into, okay, look, let's look outward again. And this is, uh, you can't even look at regions. I think you need to look at companies at individual basis because uh, as Archer mentioned earlier, we are in so, such a uh, so much better position than our neighbors here. It, it, the same goes for everywhere else. There are, there are countries where the companies again are emerging out of the crisis and they may start looking at potential investments while, while others are still in crisis mode. So this is, this is a tricky thing. This is a super big challenge for Georgia, but I think it can be done. Do we have any kind of uh, like samples, like best practices we can use? Katerina, I remain with you uh, just for a while. I mean, uh, opportunities or examples such as Ireland, Poland, Estonia, success stories of implementing policies uh, aimed to attracting FDI and increasing, of course, production bases. Uh, I am sure there are lots of very, very good uh, examples and Georgia will have to study them and, and uh, decide which will work best uh, for, the, for going forward. But one thing which is very important is the fact that investors actually talk to each other. So when the new potential investors come to the country, they will seek people who are already working here and ask which are the challenges. So in this work, it is exceptionally important to reach out to the companies that are here, find out what their issues are, quickly and swiftly remedy these issues because these are probably minor uh, measures that need to be taken uh, to make sure that when the new uh, new com companies come that they that Georgia gets uh, very very good uh, references from the people who are already working here I think that is one thing that is very often forgotten uh, and I think this is some uh, uh, an area where every country in the world can step up thank you Katarina and uh, I think uh, Evgeny wants to have a remark in this regard and then I will remain with one question with him. You can go ahead, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Georgie. Now, uh, I do agree that uh, any strategy needs an update from time to time, but also I would also um, uh, you know, like to, to know that, uh, as uh, Misha mentioned, uh, Georgia's uh, uh, investment promotion strategy is very recent. Uh, and uh, this investment strategy does have a lot of good international practice embodied in it already. So uh, we recently published um, uh, our biennial report on uh, investment uh, competitiveness global. Uh, and it does have a whole chapter on what makes a good investment promotion agency. I think two major imp uh, important uh, messages coming from that uh, work and that are actually being embodied in Georgia's uh, strategy is the one to have a focused approach uh, and I know that the new strategy is really, you know, it doesn't isolate, uh, it doesn't dismiss any sectors, but it does uh, uh, benchmark sectors based on their desirability and then also the attractiveness uh, for investors. So I think it's a step forward for Georgia from past experience where uh, the efforts might not have been fully focused, they might have been spread thinly, that now we have a clear mandate on where we want to achieve results. Um, and what kind of results. Another uh, important aspect of that, uh, of our work coming out is that you really need to effectively communicate with investors. And I think this is exactly, again, what Enterprise Georgia does. Um, they have a list of 400 uh, companies. They have developed uh, value propositions for all the sectors that they plan to target. So I think in these two cases, it's a really a marked improvement and 
I would, again, you know, we can update, but let's make sure that we uh, implement the way it is done. An important part that we, have, uh, that we didn't have until now is supporting firms throughout the life cycle of the investment. And I think this is something that Katarina mentioned. So investors talk to each other. So if somebody comes in, has a good uh, experience being attracted, but then there are problems that are not being resolved. And, you know, when new investors come in, uh, that's not going to uh, be a, a great sell. So I understand, uh, and maybe Misha can confirm that with the new changes, they have actually introduced an after sales function, uh, which is going to be a, a good improvement. So uh, altogether, we are really proud to be um, associated with this effort, and we uh, look forward to, uh, to you know, uh, a lot of uh, successes uh, in, in promoting uh, uh, in the Thanks, Evgeny. And uh, correctly mentioned, uh, he, Misha already has mentioned, and he also requested just for a very short update in regards of investment strategy. Misha, please go ahead. And then I have a final question. We should resume in like max 10 minutes. Sorry for this. And uh, I will remain with just one question. Go ahead. Sorry, I'll be very quick. So our, uh, uh, first of all, thank you, Evgeny, again for, for your support and participation. It, it was very pro productive, and uh, we hope that uh, this new strategy will uh, will gain the fruits. So the new strategy is also up uploaded on our website, Enterprise Go G. The a small changes in the new strategy is that there are some sectors that are coming forward. For example, it's pharmaceutical, medical research, it's electric parts manufacturing, and the new efforts and new companies that we are talking to now are with a new value proposition. So we are not concentrating and not pitching Georgia with a let's say old strategy. We already we already have a new value proposition out of which. One of the most important things is that Georgia is not just good for tourism, but Georgia is for good for business because we are COVID free. This is something that we should not underestimate because every call that we have with investors starts with that question. And it's good that we have for the first question, we, all, we, we all, always have a green light. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, yeah, my, my, my final question goes to, Representatives of uh, IFIS, I join my voice to Archil while he was uh, so grateful to IMF, uh, EBRD, and World Bank uh, for everything what they are doing for us uh, during this. Uh, it's more than uncertain. It's quite, it's more it's more than difficult what is happening around. But at the same time, the, just to resume our con conversation, due to the. Uh, current and existing situation, what do we have? Mercedes, I will begin person uh, from you. Uh, current pandemic, it's natural that it's for the government to increase spending. Uh, increasing public uh, debt level. Do you see the room for the production enhancement measures considering existing high debt level in this regard? And what will be the, your recommendations to the Georgian government? Um, thank you, Georgi. This is a, a very interesting question. And I think one has to think about the current context. And I, I, I'm going to make three remarks. The first one is that in the context of a crisis like no other, that's how we call this crisis at the IMF, the Georgian authorities have taken uh, opportunity of the policy space that they have in order to increase the spending. And the spending has been directed to first increase health uh, spending to take care of those uh, who got sick, uh, support households who, love, uh, who have lost income, and also measures to support the business uh, community in order to make sure that the, the, the impact of the, of the shock uh, can, be, uh, can be reduced and prepare the economy for a recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, public debt has increased. Uh, but there was a fiscal, uh, you know, the level of public debt was uh, relatively low and debt remains sustainable in our analysis. So uh, there is a commitment from the authorities going forward to do fiscal consolidation and public debt is expected to be reduced in the coming years. Uh, not all the government can do is suspending. Uh, I think the crisis highlight the importance of advancing structural reforms. And here, I think, as many of the panelists have highlighted, the need to increase productivity, uh, 
with a, a workforce that has the skills that are needed for the jobs of the future. And we need to have, we will, the authorities need to make an assessment with the business community about what are the jobs of the future in Georgia. There will be automation, there will be digitalization, access to internet, having the skills to do uh, working from, home, from remotely with, with technology is very important. I think it's also very important to uh, strengthen the quality of institutions, governance, uh, dispute resolution, uh, the insolvency framework that uh, the authorities are, uh, have been putting together and making sure that there is a clear insolvency framework will be very important. Uh, but overall, I think sustaining uh, macro stability and political instability, uh, being transparent as the authorities have been about the budget operations is very important. Thank you, Mercedes. Evgeny, is it the right time, is it a good momentum to not just to talk, but to take initial steps to the Georgian economic model itself, to, from self-service driven to productive? What's your point of view? Um, we we don't really like uh, in the in the world like the the, the world uh, the word model economic model. I think if uh, by somebody this uh, means model being open uh, to trade, uh, predictable business environment, um, doing um, uh, reforms to improve the the functioning of markets, um, that's indeed uh, something that we would like uh, uh, to see and. Uh, um, uh, and uh, do in Georgia. I think um, um, uh, Georgia is a very good um, uh, example and it has a lot to build on. Um, I'm, I wanted to intervene a bit better uh, earlier, but uh, I think Mercedes made a, a very nice point that it's not just for the sake of import substitution or you know, really be the productivity that drives the, uh, this decision. Uh, and just looking at um, you know, reducing imports uh, may not be the most appropriate uh, way of, uh, uh, of looking at things. So just to put it this way, if you start reducing cars tomorrow, I'll still prefer my Toyota, probably for a, bit, uh, for a few more years. Uh, so yes, um, uh, you know, go for areas where you have the, the uh, comparative advantage. Having said that, comparative advantage is dynamic. Um, invest in your education, uh, invest in, uh, in, the, in, in, in having more competitive markets, uh, in having better network industries, uh, in um, improving uh, the functioning of the judiciary, uh, and uh, I think the results uh, uh, will, uh, will come and will be visible uh, in terms of improving the productivity in Georgia. Thanks, Evgeny. I will uh, exclude for the future from my terminology model while having conversation with the representatives of the World Bank. I'm moving uh, to Katarina. I really miss our conversations and great to have her on our panel. Katarina, do you see personally still space uh, for further working, I mean, more aggressive working on the model of Georgian economy? You are EBRD, not the World Bank. I see, I'm still using the model again. Yes, and I'm not, I'm not an economist, so I, I'm, I'm kind of neutral here. Um, uh, I, I, I think um, uh, for the time being, what we have right now, as it's, we all agree, it's, it's a unique situation. Let's use the situation to fix what, needed, what needs to be fixed within the next 10 years anyway. So uh, assuming that Mercedes will allow us to use some more fiscal space for, for sovereign debt, um, I would say fix all the roads that need to be fixed now when there are a few tourists, upgrade the electricity network to make sure everyone can work from home uh, uninterrupted, internet access for everyone. Georgia has taken an enormous leap now uh, with, uh, in terms of digitalization, uh, just because we had to during these uh, past couple of months. And let's continue to build on that. Uh, uh, I, would, uh, I wouldn't be too um, worried about using a bit of extra and sovereign debt capacity to get this done now because it just it's just moving it in time because over 10 years it would have needed to be done anyway um, and then uh, with all this infrastructure work uh, the, these uh, projects create uh, lots of jobs outside the tourism sector that they will need material which is good for the construction safe sector so there will be a knock-on effect throughout the economy so I, I really think this is this is what needs to be done now uh, even though this is a, a sovereign led it will support the private sector for sure 
Thank you. Uh, my favorite part uh, while having conversations, uh, I mean, public one as well, with Artyom Gachiladze is always his, uh, uh, his ideas and thoughts uh, about FDI, about best practices and things like that. Uh, I really want to cover both issues, but we do not have much time. So uh, first of all, I really want to be aware about his uh, idea considering uh, production enhancement measures, what has been highlighted, Archil, through the Galton Target presentation. What's your personal point of view, please? I mean, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, please. Yes. So I think your question is specifically regarding the presentation and what has been presented in terms of the import substitution, et cetera, right? Import substitution and about uh, production enhancement measures, what has been highlighted through, through it, yes. Yeah. Um, well, I, I kind of tend to agree with both speakers that have just highlighted Evgeny and, and Gatarina. I think the, I think Galton Taggart research in this case is, is useful because it highlights where the opportunities are. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope that that uh, larger investors, some of our clients, etc., pay attention to this because that way, and plus with the support of uh, Enterprise Georgia and with the Minister of Economy, they can really realize some of the projects uh, so that they are producing these goods whenever the economy fully recovers in a couple of years of time. Um, so that's that's my idea that I think. Um, so, so, so in other words, um, I, I think industrial policy is very risky. People have been wrong about it more often than not in the history. So I think the analysis of highlighting where the opportunities are is fantastic, and the rest private sector will do. Regarding rather Katarina's point in terms of doing some of the infrastructure, I couldn't agree more. And I think that is highlighted in the presentation as well that we are uh, while we are top 10 country in terms of easing, ease of doing business by IFC standard, et cetera, et cetera, with the infrastructure, we are somewhere in the middle of 100, 190 countries or so with uh, 75, uh, while well, number 75, right, in terms of infrastructure. So we are still at a point where increased infrastructure, if done in a smart way, can have a significant GDP positive impact over the next few years. Like if Japan does an extra faster train while they do a train trip in three and a half hours, if it arrives in three hours, you know, GDP multiplier may be relatively low. But if you really connect Eastern and Western Georgia with a faster road, it really changes the, the, the dynamics of, of, of the Georgian economy. And the same goes with the internet to everybody and so forth and so forth. So there's still plenty of infrastructure projects in Georgia which have a significant GDP multiplier effect on the Georgian economy. So um, that's my two words about it. So, so basically we, where we are lagging is the infrastructure in terms of the global comparisons and, and, and the high school education. So both of these, I think, uh, could be, this time could be used for us to concentrate on those. Thank you, Archie. Uh, uh, my the floor goes to Iraqli, and then to Misha, just uh, for the final resume of, uh, of the panel. Iraqli, please go ahead. Uh, I just interrupted you for the last uh, moment. Uh, you mentioned about various, various programs coming from the government in this direction, I mean, uh, Production enhancement. So, your your flow is it good momentum? We all agree due to the uncertain period and times what we have right now. But should we think more about production enhancement as well? Uh, absolutely, uh, yes. And since we are running short of time, I will try to focus on very important thing. Maybe more general, but uh, still very important. Um, of course, in parallel with short-term policy measures where that we are, the government and the business and the community is talking about during this period, uh, uh, which are oriented on mitigating the negative impact of the pandemic on our economy, we should also ensure medium and uh, long-term policy responses. Um, we should uh, elaborate structural reforms, as was correctly mentioned, and instruments for boosting economic recovery. 
Um, as uh, also was already uh, said and mentioned, this include, uh, includes more orientation on domestic production, support of innovations and technology, and this is another agency very important also under my supervision and will be very glad, very glad next time to discuss this in more details. This uh, corresponds to improved skills and competence of uh, labor force, which is one of the major issues, and everybody agrees on this. And FDI, entra FDI attraction is, is a core um, direction to uh, inject new uh, skills and knowledge and also funds in the Georgian economy. And in this regard, uh, the government of Georgia is currently, on a daily basis, is working with experts from Deloitte and Cambridge University uh, on a document on post-crisis economic development, which will become the, uh, the backbone of the country's long-term economic development vision in the post-COVID era. Just yesterday, we had a very, uh, very large uh, the discussion of the draft report of one of the part of, parts of this report about the sectors of economy at the prime minister's um, uh, office uh, with the participation of uh, more than a dozen of local experts. And there was a presentation by uh, Deloitte uh, New York office about the initial findings. And uh, we, we assure uh, the business community and uh, the, the donor organizations that uh, every step of this uh, document uh, development and the presentation and uh, the action plan of its implementation will be in detail uh, communicated with, the, uh, with every stakeholder in order to, to, to this document to become the, 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 the real uh, action plan for every stakeholder, government, business, uh, donor organizations, and every other party which, uh, which is related to these economic activities. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Irakli. Thank you so much. Misha, I think we're fine. And uh, I mean, we are all fine. I'm sorry that we were a bit out of time. I, I know you're so much busy. Uh, many thanks again to Galten Taggart, fabulous team, especially now presented with uh, Otar Sharikadze. Uh, I think Eva, Bachana, all of them, they're with us. Uh, thanks for this fantastic opportunity. Uh, I'm also trying to support all these activities because we launched uh, new media product, uh, uh, which is like weekly uh, TV, analytics. it's not TV, it's actually web-based, but it's going to be uh, like a slot, media slot, which is totally in English for one hour, which is going to be analytical program on web, on B Business Media Georgia, and Forbes Georgia will cover in English all the news related to Georgia economy and world news, so uh, you can watch yourself and this panel as well just in the nearest Sunday. So it was my pleasure hosting you on this panel. Again, many thanks for your participation and many thanks to Galten Taggart for hosting all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope to see you on the real conference now, not web-based by real conference in Tbilisi in a safe country. Soon. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.